Hello there fans, and with two demons down, we have two left to capture. So we're going to head over to Ikemos Ike Swamp. Uh, now, the, the enemies in this place are mainly weak to blunt weapons, including the demon of stone himself. So, yep, time to equip the Debasa, and also a shield while I'm at it. Now, when it comes to fleece, she can't actually handle a blunt weapon. It's not part of her skill set. So I'm going to equip the Fiery Falcon to her. The idea being that uh, even if the sword does little damage itself, the magic spell will do most of the damage. It yeah, it's I know it doesn't make much of a difference, but that's the best I can do. Sprawled around the palace of Ikemos. The very waters that swallowed the priest king's empire had turned to dust. And Titus the demon of stone. Oh no, he's called Titus. <laughs> warriors to march on the empire of Orenia. Such was the demon's power that rock and stone would move by his will alone. Oh, oh no, he's he's an earthbender. But yet, uh, yet the demon's called Titus, which makes me uh, think of Final Fantasy X. Even though that character is named Titus, a little slightly different. Uh, now coming up, as you can see here, now I'm not sure if you saw that, but you saw uh, Fleets attack the statue with a sword and it, and it did zero damage. They are completely res resistant to uh, sharp weapons, as you can see. But uh, fortunately, uh, Joseph and Jakar are slamming him away with, uh, <laughs> with the blunt maces. And if you recall our first visit here, of course th the boss was the one statue. And now we have a whole army of them. Ah, uh, but not to worry. You're so powerful at this point, they, they're they not really much of a threat. And like I said, just, you know, Josie and Jakob with two hammer-based weapons, and, uh, yeah, they shouldn't give you too much trouble. Now, here comes the Onyx Gargoyle. And, uh, yeah, their, their only real weakness is magic. So, yeah, there you go. As well as those two, you can see the Onyx Golems, but uh, yeah, they haven't really got any stronger since the first time we encountered them. In fact, I would say they're only good for grinding, but with, but since they only give out 700 experience points, at this point in the game, that's not really too useful. And as you can see, the swamp has been slightly streamlined, which is something I do thank the developers for. You'll notice that the whole Earth has become solid, so yeah, you don't have to worry about the labyrinth anymore. You can just walk straight over the swamp. Uh, that and the setting, as you can see now, is sort of a sunset, as opposed to the night time setting when we first got here. So again, we can see a little better. Much appreciated. And there's not really much to say, like I said, your main strategy is to use blunt weapons with uh, Joseph and Jakar. Although you can see at this point I'm starting to lead the party with uh, Jakar. Uh, just because, yeah, he is the physically strongest character. And at this point, I don't I don't use any summons just because I don't think they could help me. I don't, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's no blunt attackers at this point. I must say, I do actually like the design of the uh, gargoyles here, the wings, they kind of look, look, look like manta rays. They look very organic. And of course you can see here I'm switching to uh, Joseph's magic abilities and casting fire arrows. And you can also see that uh, there's a constant fireball that the gargoyle is trapped in. And uh, yeah, of course that's uh, from Fleece's a fiery falcon. And that's, that's really uh, quite a good weapon, considering how, if you, re if you remember, I used that at the very beginning of the game. It was, it, it was sort of, oh, I forget the name of the character, but you talk to a madman in the city of Linnell, and then you examine a fish, and you get the fiery falcon, which is a pretty cool side quest. But yeah, and yeah, a, just a sword with the ability to cast a fireball occasionally, it's a big help. I mean, granted, at this point it's not really that powerful, but uh, like I said, if Fleece wasn't holding that sword, she'll be with a regular dagger, and thus she wouldn't be doing much damage anyway. 
And again, this does this does highlight the fact that in this in this game, blunt weapons are slightly out balanced because they're they're just like t three times more useful than swords. And as you can see, this uh, this now if you're wondering about the palace, we don't have to explore the entire palace again like we did in our first visit. It's just the swamp, and then w when we enter the palace, we'll find ourselves in the boss arena. And speaking of the boss, we are fighting Tid Titus, like I said, the Demon of Stone. And uh, yeah, in the uh, in in yeah in the introductory introductory uh, monologue to this uh, dungeon. The narrator, Yargo, does mention the fact that he's trying to march against Arrhenia. And I'm not really sure why. I suspect it's got something to do with Langshang Forest. Because when we entered that uh, area in that continent, they established that a, a dragon had a fight with a giant monster or demon. And I think that's, you know, that's Titus. So he's going back there to get revenge. But uh, fortunately, he won't live that long. Because, uh, yeah, honestly, at this point, it's not really a boss fight I'm worried about. Now, as for side quests in this dungeon, there are two. And, yeah, they just require a bit of exploring, really. Now, because the water has, has been dried up, or whatever, this area here is will now, like, sort of branch off into a secret uh, passageway. Hmm. Now, speaking of which, these statues are a good enemy for experience points. They give off, like, 7,000. And that's really good. And, of course, you don't have to come back here to fight these statues. There is a random encounter in the forest where there's a whole group of statues and stone golems you can fight. But, as I recall, that's a bit of a, a rare encounter. No, no, so maybe you are better off going in and out of this uh, section here. Uh, of course, the greater Gorgons, go Gorgons, come here, and uh, they're so weak you could call them a Gorgoner. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that pun was terrible. But uh, yeah, speaking of which, are, were these Gorgons meant to appear earlier on in the game? Because they really seem like it. But anyway, here's, ne here's the uh, path we can now access. And around the corner here, we should find one of the carvings for the Omidiliosi side quest. And I'm really getting quite used to that name, that Omidiliosi. It's quite fun. And if you recall, the Omidiliosi, <laughs> saying it again, is a map of three ancient cities of the coastline that once was spanned across Orenia. So here we have the Mulhul carving. Yeah, so it, it really does employ like the city of Lanel and I, su I suppose this swamp as well. Were once part of the Kosani civilization a long time ago. I do like getting access to this area. It's a nice little viewpoint here. And again, to complete these side quests, you really have to be quite explorative. You have to go down every nook and cranny. Hmm. But something I do notice on the on the soundtrack is you can he actually hear birds singing, which which is kind of odd because this place is looking a bit lighter, a bit brighter, when really it should be even more intimidating. And I'm not sure if you just saw it, but uh, Jakar did like nearly 300 points of damage with his sledgehammer. And uh, yeah, that's the uh, weapon I've got equipped now. Oh, he's actually the war hammer. I'm sorry, I can't tell. They look very similar, but anyway, either way, they're both two-handed weapons, extremely powerful. Now, I think after this dungeon, I switch him back to the Dibasa, because even though the Dibasa is a one-handed weapon, it's a bit quicker. That and uh, I find that when I, whenever I use these big two-handed hammer weapons, the enemies tend to dodge them a lot. It's probably down to a speed aspect. So yeah, the Debasser is definitely the better way to go. But again, I was saying before that Jakar becomes really useful near the uh, later part of the game, and you can see now.
In fact, let's rename the game Jakar's Great Adventure. It is nice to also just get a better view of the architecture here. Mm, I get two points here, I'm not sure where to put it, so I'll just end up putting it in holy. Hopefully at least I can get some a uh, few more spells. And it's actually a good position for Rosalind because at, at this point I've leveled up her the I've leveled up the important magic skills like fire and ice. So I don't really know where to go with her from this point on. Oh, unfortunately they won't let me cast Fireball here. But, uh, I decided to try out some uh, Meteor Storm. And something I remembered when looking back at this footage that is that I do actually get use out of the advanced fire spells near the, near the later part of the game. Unfortunately, because the level is a bit brighter, you can see the draw, the draw distance. Of the PS2, you can you can sort of see the environment sort of pop in. Uh, now the entrance to the uh, the palace here to fight the demon is to the left, but uh, there's an item to the right of the palace we need to pick up first. And I'm looking at the symbol on the palace. I'm not sure what it means. Was it mentioned before in the game? I not. I'm not really sure myself, really. Yeah, and again, I do appreciate the fact that this is streamlined from our first visit. We don't have to l navigate the labyrinth across the swamp, and also we don't have to explore the insides of the palace. Oh, and that's another thing too, the sort of palaces we knew, uh, some areas are still intact, like one or two rooms, but most of them aren't. And round the corner here is the Tome of the Nivseum. And uh, just take a quick look here, and yeah, we're, re we're really collecting them now, we've got three, uh, three, we've got six pages now. So that side quest is uh, coming on, coming along really well. Oh, and really, Jakar with his uh, showing off how useful he is. He does know does now know the advanced healing spells. Pretty awesome, I guess. So I guess because he's a warrior and he knows some healing spells, he's somewhat of a paladin, I would say. But uh, yeah, a, a really good character. I like how the, the Onyx gole Golems explode. It's uh, like they're made out of combustible kryptonite. And here's the entrance, you just take the path to the uh, left here. Yeah, so it, it's really good that I can get this done in one part, I suppose. And granted, I'm still editing, editing, uh, editing out all the uh, repetitive battles, but uh, oh well. Now, I'll try something here, and it doesn't actually work. Before I enter the boss fight, I summon the Jade Golem, and I also cast a few buff buffering spells on myself. But yeah, I shouldn't have bothered really, because all these spells disappear once you enter the boss fight. So, yep, yeah, a big waste of time. Now again, you do want to use the Jade Golem in this boss fight, because uh, this Stone Demon has an Earthquake ability. And luckily your Onyx Golem, I mean, your, your Onyx Golem, your Jade Golem is immune to it. Well, it's no wonder I got it confused with the Onyx Golem, because it's clearly, clearly the same model. It's just a bit greener. Oh, I'm, I'm casting Bless and Protect, and it's not going to make the foggiest bit of difference. 
But uh, yeah, this boss fight, not really much I can say. He's just, he's more of a physical fighter. So I'm going to let uh, Jakar take the lead. <laughs> this is like a Stone Age version of Terminator 2. But uh, I must say, what an entrance. You know, I was just playing Pokemon Woods and I just realised this guy has some similarities with Terracoy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this is what Pokemon would, would look like if it was realistic. Yeah, and I have to check all the buffering spells I just cast on my party on it have now disappeared. That and I don't have my Jade Golem. And also, Joseph has half health for some reason. Did I miss something? Yeah, but yeah, immediately cast Protect. Because that will uh, protect you against uh, physical dam damage. And also, I'll get the Jade Golem out as soon as possible. But yeah, even though he's strong, this again goes into the mechanics of a uh, summoner, summoner. It's essentially a group of small, weak enemies are more of a threat to you than one large, powerful enemy. Now, I'm looking at the damage that Jakar is doing, and I think he's doing like 160, or at least about 100 damage. It's hard to tell, you know, there's so many people attacking him. Hmm, I'm trying to see who's go who he's going after, and he think I think he's going after Rosalind. I can't tell he's in the way. Oh, and he has that, that world charge move. And also this quake move here. Huh. Doesn't affect my golem. And also, I'm not exactly sure what the, the golem is doing, but I think he's casting Faith and Bless on the party as he's attacking. Which is really nice. And yeah, I, not, not not to sound cocky, but my party's uh, has got some physical strong, physically strong people, and a good healer. As long as he doesn't attack my healer, I should be okay. Ooh, yeah. Again, it's lucky I do have the golem outlaw because that quake attack would be really bad for me. Uh, so essentially the Stone Demon, his main weakness is Blunt, and I think that's all his weaknesses are. Mm. But uh, I did get into a bit of trouble here, so I cast Vitalize. So uh, I guess he's in a complete pushover. Mm. I, I was just thinking, because of the game's mechanics, when he does that charge move, it's not exactly easy to dodge. You can't exactly run out of the way really quickly. There are no dodge rolls in this game. But uh, fortunately he's stunned for a few seconds, so yeah. And I do love the design of this guy, he's just a big brute, really. And he's bulky. And now he's defeated. Well, Stone the Crows, he's defeated. And apparently he's radioactive now because he's glowing green. Mm. Although then again, green does represent Earth for some reason. I mean, I guess it's I guess it's because, it's because because green is earthy, of course. But enough about color coding elements. He has given us quite a few decent items here. The Warhammer, 90 damage, kind of slow. I guess that's okay. The Winterlong, uh, Pale for Sword. Actually, very powerful sword, actually. And of course, the summoner chainmail. Which I'm pleased to get because it's red. And it matches his other costume. So. Oh, now we have. We nearly have the complete set now. So, uh, put, it on, put it on Joseph, and. Yep. Looking fine, Joseph. Looking fine. 